Hello Biology 112 students, welcome back. It's Brett here to show you meiosis. So again, we're going to use our pot bead kits um, and we're going to uh, uh, need a cell and a uh, nuclei inside the cell. To simplify, I'm going to give me as much room as possible. I'm going to make this cell as big as I can. And again, we're going to put the nucleus inside of it in that nuclear membrane. All right. So to start out with, we're going to have uh, two homologous pairs of chromosomes. So we have the short ones from mom and dad, the maternal and paternal, and these would be identical gene for gene. And then we also, but not connected, uh, we also have a long pair of chromosomes that are, again, identical gene for gene, um, but they might have slightly different information for each gene. Um, okay. So, what we're going to do, uh, again, we will replicate the chromosomes, and to save some time, um, I'm going to make this process a little bit quicker, uh, but this would happen in the interphase that pre precedes meiosis, and it would take quite a while. So we're going to have materials brought in from outside the cell, nucleotides, uh, other things. The DNA is going to get copied uh, base for base and it's going to make an identical copy of each chromosome. There's one of them. There's another one. There's another one. And the last one. Okay, so that is the end of the S stage. And again, when this happens, all the chromosomes are inside the nucleus and in that form that we call chromatin, which is uncondensed. Um, and kind of spread out throughout the nucleus. So this is a germline cell that is getting ready to undergo meiosis. And in prophase one, uh, some of the same events of prophase happen. The chromosomes condense, the uh, nuclear envelope breaks down and is saved for later, or the materials are saved for later. Uh, but something really interesting happens with these chromosomes. Uh, instead of having uh, each chromosome just kind of line up with each um, of its partners, the, the chromosomes actually interact. So the maternal and paternal chromosome pairs, and these are duplicated, so we have four chromatids. Uh, so we would actually call this a tetrad of chromosomes. Uh, they start interacting, and there are proteins that uh, line them up gene for gene uh, so that they can potentially exchange information. So we might have some crossing over events where at very specific places um, the DNA breaks and the DNA crosses over from maternal chromosome to paternal chromosome and vice versa. And this might happen several times uh, on each chromosome. Ooh, we don't want to have any damaged chromosomes as a result. So what we end up with might be these recombinant chromosomes that are partly um, paternal, let's say, but then a little bit maternal, or mostly maternal and a little bit paternal. So we have some crossing over that happened here, and there might be some crossing over with the other pair too. So we will model that. Okay.
So now we have chromosomes that have crossed over. And now the cell is, is uh, getting ready for metaphase one. So meiosis again has two cell divisions. Uh, prophase one of meiosis one is the first step. Metaphase one is the next step. And here the chromosomes can line up along the equator but it's not individual chromosomes, it is homologous pairs of chromosomes. So those tetrads stay together after crossing over or not. Uh, and then the spindle fibers from each centriole pair attach to only one side of the um, uh, homologous pair. So the way that these pairs line up is random. So it could just be equally likely that the pairs oriented themselves like that or like that. So which way the pairs orient is random. Um, but the uh, maternal and paternal centromeres end up on opposite sides. So this is metaphase one. And anaphase one is interesting uh, because the centromeres do not split. Uh, centromeres remain intact, but the homologous pairs of chromosomes split. So they start moving in opposite directions like that. And those get moved towards opposite ends of the cell. So that's anaphase one. Uh, telophase one, uh, the nuclear envelope may or may not reform. I'm just gonna erase these spindle fibers. They do get broken down during meiosis and mitosis. And then cytokinesis might happen to divide that cell in half. Okay, so that is the end of meiosis one. Um, but the cell is not done dividing. Uh, it's going to go through meiosis two, which is another round of cell division that serves to separate the sister chromatids. And now we actually have two cells that are going to undergo this process, or two nuclei that would undergo this process. And here, uh, again, we'd have a prophase. The chromosomes move around. They end up in the center of the cell. And I wish I had a little more room. And this is happening for both uh, cells from meiosis one. And in metaphase one, they're lined up. You can't really quite show this well enough, but that's okay. And then anaphase one, the centromeres split. Or, I'm sorry, anaphase two, the centromeres split. So they start moving in opposite directions. And they keep moving. And then telophase two, they stop moving. The nuclear envelope reforms around each of the daughter nuclei. That's not really in the other cell. There we go. Uh, here, we'll move the cell membrane a little bit. These membranes are flexible, right? Okay, and I've got some nuclear pores.
and then we need cytokinesis. We need another round of cytokinesis to separate uh, the cytoplasm of these two cells. That could happen like that. And then we have four haploid nuclei that are genetically different inside of four separate daughter cells. And that is the end of meiosis.